So can, can everybody hear me? Okay, I'm going to be talking about liver-directed treatment of uveal melanoma and hepatic metastases, hopefully in 10 minutes. And um, I'm sorry if I speed through things and it's very superficial, but obviously we're going to be here to talk about uh, any questions that you have. Okay, so I'm going to be discussing three types of liver-directed therapies, immunoembolization, radioembolization, and chemoembolization. And there's both conventional chemoembolization and also chemoembolization with drug-eluting beads. So just a little basics. Uh, the liver has a dual blood supply. It gets supply from both the hepatic arteries and the portal vein. Now, the normal liver parenchyma gets most of its blood supply from the portal vein, as you can see from the image on the right. And the hepatic tumors obtain a majority of the blood flow from the hepatic artery. Therefore, by placing a catheter or a hollow tube in the hepatic artery, liver metastases can be treated with various therapeutic agents with little impact on the normal liver parenchyma. In addition, you can block blood flow to the hepatic artery. We call this embolization, and it also has little impact to the normal liver. But it has advantages. When you block the blood flow to the hepatic artery, it traps in therapeutic agents within the tumor longer and also causes tumor necrosis or tumor cell death. And this is just an image. This is just an image of our angio suite here. Um, how do you put this one? Yeah. There we go. So this is what our typical procedure uh, room looks like. We do everything under image guidance. So all these procedures that I'm talking about, we do under x-ray guidance, and we can see the patient's images on a monitor right in front of us. And we access the common femoral artery, which is located in the right groin area, and we put a hollow tube or a catheter all the way up into the hepatic artery. You could see that the tumor is being supplied by the hepatic artery, and then we can go ahead and inject our therapeutic agents and then embolize the tumor as well. So immunoembolization. This is the delivery of immune modulators into the hepatic artery to treat metastases. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to boost the patient's immune system to fight tumor cells. Um, and what we use here, and you've probably already read about this, is granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, or GMCSF. In addition to delivering GMCSF into the hepatic artery, we also block the blood supply to the, uh, to the liver, therefore the tumors, and we typically choose a temporary agent. So basically, we tempor temporarily embolize the hepatic artery, um, and the blood flow we gain, we, we, is restored within two to five days. So this is just a result of our phase one uh, study, and the purpose of this study was to investigate the safety of immunoembolization using variable doses of GMCSF. We treated 34 patients with immunoembolization. We had 64 patients, I'm sorry, 64 percent of patients have a treatment response or stable disease with a median overall survival of 14.4 months and a one-year survival of 62 percent. Um, and as probably was mentioned before, without uh, treatment, most patients have an overall survival anywhere between two to seven months. And we do have one patient who is still alive and probably very famous on the Ocumel site who has been living over eight years. This is just an example of an arteriogram. This is a catheter is placed in the hepatic artery. These big black balls here are the tumors, the melanoma metastases. This is, this is prior to immunoembolization. This is after. And this is two months after. And you can see that the hypervascular tumors are pretty much gone. This is a patient who is very dear to me who um, un started undergoing immunoembolization in 2010. You can see here there's an MRI of her liver. She has a pretty large right lobe uh, tumor. And this is her this summer. And you can see that it has uh, decreased in size substantially. Now, in our phase uh, one trial, we also had about 30 percent of patients who had tumors that were outside the liver, so lungs, subcutaneous metastases. And we found af that after immunoembolization, the median progression-free survival um, from when those systemic met metastases started growing was about 10.4 months. And in some patients, we actually resected these tumors that were outside the liver, and we found that there was an inflammatory response. So we concluded that immunoembolization may have an effect on the growth of extrahepatic uh, tumors. And this is the same patient that I just showed, showed you with the liver metastases. She had this very large lymph node in her chest, 
and she emailed me telling me that she had severe pain in her chest. We got, we got a CT scan, and you know, there, there's this big, large ma mass. So we set her up to get radiation, and right before she had radiation, we, we got this, and it had shrunk. This was right after her treatment to her liver. So apparently her immune system probably caused this to shrink. Okay, radioembolization or serospheres. Radioembolization is the injection of micron-sized particles loaded with a radioactive isotope known as yttrium-90 directly into the hepatic artery to treat liver tumors. And the um, radioembolization particle of choice is serospheres, which I'm sure you all heard of as well. Um, here again, we do everything under image guidance, and I just wanted to show you the delivery box. These are actually the little radioactive microspheres, the serospheres. They look like little grains of sand. They're really, really tiny. And this is the access site. This is in the common femoral artery. Um, we deliver these right into the hepatic artery. Um, a very quick literature review because there's really not a lot out there on radioembolization for uvular melanoma. The first study was published in 2009, and as you could see, it was five centers from around the world with 11 patients. So obviously, there's, this is a very rare tumor. Um, but it had encouraging results. At a three-month follow-up, they had 100% response rate, and, and they also had a one-year survival of 80%, which uh, we were very encouraged by. We published our data of um, our experience with radioembolization with 32 patients. These patients, however, uh, were treated with radioembolization following failure of other treatments such as immunoembolization or chemoembolization. And we found that 20, 20 patients had either stable disease or a response to treatment, while 12 patients went on to have progression of disease. But we had a median oval survival of 10 months with a range which was pretty broad, 1 to 29 months. And we had 10 patients still alive at follow-up. And this is just an example of a patient who had a complete response. Here are the tumors prior to radioembolization, and here are the, uh, her uh, after treatment, and she had an overall survival of 27 months. And here's another gentleman who had a tumor. You can see here, treat, she, he, he had a stable disease following radioembolization, and his overall survival was 29 months. Now, we are currently enrolling patients for a phase two serosphere trial here at Jefferson. And the purpose of this is to investigate the clinical response and the safety of serospheres in a prospective manner. There's really nothing out there right now um, looking at this. And more importantly, we want to know who will benefit from this uh, treatment. So we are obtaining liver biopsies prior to treatment, and we're going to look at those genetic characteristics which may or may not uh, be uh, appropriate for this particular treatment. This is just an example of a patient who underwent radioembolization. You can see large tumor at the dome of the right lobe of the liver. This is a PET scan, MRI, and this is our arteriogram. You can say, well, she only had one tumor. Well, this patient, she went to get this resected, and when they opened her up, she had lots of little dots on the surface of the liver, so she came to us. This is 2012. This is her um, 14 months later. You can see that decreased activity on the PET scan, a little smaller on the MRI. Okay, chemoembolization. Chemoembolization combines the delivery of cytotoxic drugs into the hepatic artery with the blockage or embolization of the uh, tumor blood supply. And there's both conventional taste and drug-eluting beads, and I'll get into those um, separately. Now, the theoretical advantages of chemoembolization include higher drug concentrations within the tumor, longer dwell times for chemotherapeutic agents, less systemic toxicity, and the ability to render tumors ischemic. So in the conventional chemoembolization, what we do is we infuse the chemotherapy agent in first, and then we go ahead and we block the blood flow to the tumor using perhaps gel foam. Um, and there are no standard chemotherapy, chemotherapy agents for this particular treatment. And I apologize for this very busy slide, but this is pretty much a summary. I probably have to update it because there have been a couple more published. Um, a summary of all the chemotherapy agents that have been used for the purpose of um, treating uvular melanoma hepatic metastases. Um, you'll see these, most of the studies did use cisplatin. Um, we tried it back in 1995, weren't too happy with our results, but then we discovered what Dr. Hushman already uh, talked about was BCNU, which is cormustine, and we published our results, and you can notice patients who did have a response to treatment uh, had an overall median survival of almost 22 months. And this is just a CT scan. This is a large left lobe 
met and a smaller right lobe met. Uh, this patient had four chemoembolizations with BCNU, and this is the CT afterwards. You can notice that the tumors are smaller, but the other thing you notice is that they, are, they became very bright. And what we mix the BCNU with is an oily agent called lipidol, um, and this gets trapped in the tumors and hopefully uh, delivers the chemotherapy directly to the tumors themselves, and this is what it looks like on CT. Okay, so what do we do when we see patients like this? And this is unfortunately something that we see on a daily basis. Um, this is a patient who presented with greater than 50% tumor burden. All this, this is her liver. All the white spots are tumor. The black spots, black area is normal. So you could see enormous tumor burden. So if somebody has a good performance status, their liver function is normal, and they feel pretty strong, we're going to treat you. Um, we are ready to fight just along with you. So what we've been doing for the last several years is we've been using uh, chemoembolization with BCNU. Instead of that 100 milligram dose, we've upped it to 200 milligrams. And recently we had this published in our um, uh, JVIR. Um, we treated 50 patients who never had treatment before who presented with enormous tumor burdens. I mean, 50% up to greater than 75%. And uh, we found the progression-free survival was about five months with a range, as you can see, all the way up to 32.3 months. So you know what? We don't know who's going to respond. And that's something we have to figure out, but it's worth a try. Um, and the median and over survival was 7.1 months, again, with a very large range. But this was really, this was really important to us. A, nearly a quarter of our patients lived greater than a year. And that, to us, was really worth doing this. And this is that same patient. She lived over 13 months, and she had a good quality of life. Okay, drug-eluting beads. Um, drug-eluting beads are kind of new, um, used for both primary and uh, metastatic disease to the liver. And these are composed of modified polyvinyl alcohol microspheres. And what these can do is you can actually load chemotherapeutic drugs directly onto the beads. We, we call it marinating the, the beads. And there's two drugs that currently can be loaded. I'm just going to really talk about doxorubicin. You'll also re hear it referred to as Debdox. But this is what they look like when they're loaded with uh, doxorubicin and they become red in color. The other things that these beads do is that they, are, they serve as the embolic particle. So we don't have to use gel foam to close the artery. They are an embolic themselves. The other advantages of drug eluting beads, it allows for a fixed chemotherapy dosing and the ability to release chemotherapeutic agents in a sustained and controlled manner. Um, it has shown that there has been significant reduction in the peak plasma concentration, which suggests that there's a greater amount of drug that is being sequestered by the tumor in the liver versus escaping into the patient's systemic circulation. So this is a little unpublished data, although we did submit this to our national meeting uh, back in October, and we haven't heard back from them yet, but we, the drug eluting beads can be very um, hard on a patient. Dr. Sada refers it to as the bomb. Um, so we've also noticed that if you keep treating these patients with drug-eluting beads, the arteries can get damaged. The liver may get damaged. So what we decide is why don't we combine Debdox, or drug-eluting beads, with BCNU, which we also know can be effective to treat uveal, uveal melanoma mets. So we looked at about 19 patients with bulky hepatic metastases. You can see they range from all the way from 4 centimeters to 16 centimeters. And um, we found that three patients had a partial response, 11 had stable disease, and five had a progression of disease. But the median of survival in these patients with bulky tumor was 9.1 months, and eight patients are still alive at follow-up. And what we also found, which was pretty significant, is that patients with nodular tumors, meaning that they're very easily separated from the normal liver parenchyma, have a significantly longer overall survival than those who have more of a diffuse infiltrating tumor where it's hard. The, the margins are kind of blurred on the MRI. So their overall survival was much greater in the nodular type, 18.8 months versus um, 3.9 months. And this is a patient who presented with leg edema, started having symptoms, um, losing weight, and you can see enormous tumor, 16 centimeter tumor in the dome of the liver. He had another one um, down here, and he also had a third one. Um, you can notice this is 2012. This is his arteriogram. This is a very large tumor, and this is him. I'm currently still treating him. This tumor is dead. 
this tumor has a little viable tissue left and that third one is gone. So this patient is doing extremely well. So we're hoping that this is gonna add uh, additional uh, you know, help to treating these patients. And thank you.